So we will see an important aspect again. Um, the conflict, conflict in the society, conflict among the countries of the world, conflict with the family, conflict with the, in any relation, and uh, conflict within, conflict inside the mind, different kinds of conflicts. Why this conflict arises in the mind? Mm -hmm. So there is one very very small discourse given by Buddha to <clears throat> uh, Sakka. Sakka means like uh, there is one uh, divine plane called Tavatimsa. Tavatimsa means uh, the plane of 33. Mm -hmm. So in the plane of 33, Timsa means 30. Tavatimsa means 33. In the plane of 33, the head of all those beings there, his name is Sakka. He is one uh, divine being. He was the king of those divine beings. And sometimes he used to visit Buddha and he used to ask some queries and he used to ask some questions with Buddha regarding what is good, what is not good, what is beneficial, what is not beneficial. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and something about how to administer, how to rule, how to conduct. So all these, some basic questions he used to ask. He was also a Sotapanna. Sotapanna means the one who already seen the glimpse of Nibbana, was entered into the stream of Nibbana, stream of liberation. So he is called a Sotapanna and that Sakha was also a Sotapanna. And he was a very, uh, say, uh, great devotee. Very, he is very much devoted to Buddha's teachings. And once he asked Buddha about why this kind of conflicts in the at different planes of existence, different levels of existence, either in the mind or in the family or in the relations or among the friends or in the society, in the communities or in the governments or in the countries. Why this conflict and this good? Because everybody wants peace only, everybody wants happiness only, everybody wants harmony only, but still we, still we create disputes, still we oppose each other, still we fight with each other, still we uh, uh, <clears throat> put ourselves against the other's views, other's intentions, other's aspirations. So why this kind of conflict, why this kind of dispute? That's what was the question asked by uh, this Sakka to the Blessed One. So the Blessed One, Buddha, he, what he answers, let us see. And then we, again we will see, we will discuss what is its relevance for us to progress in meditation or, or uh, to handle our own mind or how we can uh, develop positive harmonious relations within the mind mental faculties, within the family, within the community, within the country. So all these things, we will see its practical impact, hmm? practical uh, advantages of this, those things also we will see uh, after going through this small discourse given by Buddha to this Sakka. Sakka, ruler of the Devas, asked the Blessed One, beings wish to live without hate, hostility, or enmity. They wish to live in peace, yet they live in hate, harming one another, hostile to each other, and as enemies. By what fetters are they bound, sir, that they live in such a way? See, whomever you ask, hmm? let us say there are two parties, A and B, they hate each other like anything. But if you go and ask independently, separately, individually, you ask party A and he says, I want peace, I want harmony, I want to be friendly with party B. And if you go and ask party B, so party B also the same answer he gives. Each and every one is, is by nature, depth of their uh, being, the heart. They wish to become peaceful, wish to become happy, wish to become friendly, but still they fight, A and B, they fight like anything. Just like the present day. You can see this thing in all in, in different uh, the hostile countries, hostile communities, hostile uh, say regions, hostile uh, say linguistic or uh, racist or uh, religious, whatever it is. Individually they are very good. Individually everyone seeks happiness. Everyone wants peace. But when some issue comes, 
some ideology comes, some view comes, then people start fighting. They can go to an extent of killing each other, destroying a lot of proper, destroying a lot of people, not just one cell. World wars also. So starting from individual conflict in the mind up to the level of world wars. So why this conflict? Why this dispute? Why this hostility? Why this enmity? What are the core fetters? Fetters means the basic defilements in the mind. The strong, basic, negative things in the mind. Which of them are responsible for this kind of conflict, this kind of enmity, this kind of hostility? <clears throat> That's what is the question posed by this uh, ruler of the Devas, Sakta, the king of Devas. As I was explaining in the last week about the different akusala or unwholesome or the defilements in the mind, the 14 defilements I was explaining you. Hmm? So, <clears throat> the core defilements which are responsible for this kind of clan conflict are there in these 14 uh, akusala chetasikas or these unwholesome defilements that I explained last week. Hmm? So that we will see now. As a continuation of last week's uh, say discussion, I think uh, we can consider this discourse. And we can go a little deep into these core defilements which are responsible for conflict at all levels. So if we can understand this, then fixing this, handling this, or coming out of this, it becomes easy. And that there, there are again two defilements which can handle this, which can fix this, that also we will see. So for that, what Buddha answers, the blessed one said, ruler of the devas, it is the bonds of envy and miserliness that bind beings so that although they wish to live without hate, without hostility or without enmity and to live in peace, yet they live in hate, harming one another, hostile to each other and as enemies. So Buddha's very crisp answer, very point to point answer is it is because of envy and miserliness people they fight with each other they fight oppose each other though deep inside though in the core they want to be happy peaceful and harmonious they fight because of these two fetters two strong attachments two strong negative attachments that have built up in our psyche from time immemorial but two uh, fetters, the two defilements, they are envy and miserliness. Envy means jealousy. As I was telling you last time, envy means enviousness, envy means jealousy. By looking at other success, others prosperity, others achievements, we can't bear with that. We feel that he got it, I didn't get it. That feeling is called, that negative feeling is called, that kind of uh, uh, say uh, say Ahetuka, uh, sorry, uh, akusala, akusala chetasika. Akusala means unwholesome. Chetasika means like mental factor. So that kind of unwholesome mental factor is responsible for this kind of conflict and dispute in the world. That is one. The second one is it is its uh, counterpart. It is its twin brother. So the other one is its counterpart is Macharya or Matsarya or miserliness or possessiveness as i was telling you last time issa and macharya issa means irsha irsha means this jealousy macharya means matsarya i think it should be there in hindi and other north indian languages also it is very much there in all south indian languages matsarya matsaryam that matsarya means like what i have i should not give i should possess it i should hold on to this i should not share this with any other person. That kind of holding on, that kind of miserliness is called matsarya or possessiveness or miserliness. Uh, it's in Pali, it is called matsarya. So these are the two core defilements, issa and matsarya, that leads to all kinds of problems at all levels, at the individual level to the level of international, international level or uh, global level. Even to the global level, the disputes, the conflicts are because of these two core defilements, Issa and Macharya, envy and miserliness, or jealousy and possessiveness. 
So that's what is Buddha's very crisp and very uh, point to point answer. So this, uh, what is according to his question, very appropriately, very aptly he answered and he gave these two defilements as the core reason for the hospital. Then Sakka becomes, uh, become, he becomes very happy and he exclaimed with happiness, so it is blessed one, so it is fortunate one. Through the blessed one's answer, I have overcome my doubt and gotten rid of uncertainty. He is also a very wise person. After all, he is also a Sotapanna. So immediately he could respond that, yes, this is absolutely perfect. Envy and uh, possessiveness uh, or miserliness, Issa and Macharya are the core reasons, core defilements in the mind, the Chetasikas in the mind, the mental factors in the mind, the unwholesome mental factors in the mind, which are responsible for this kind of disputes or this kind of conflicts in the world. And again, he continues his query, his asking. Then Sakka, having expressed his appreciation, asked another question. He again asked Buddha another question. By being satisfied with the answer to, the, to his first question, he asked the second question. But sir, what gives rise to envy and miserliness? What is their origin? How are they born? How do they arise? When what is present, do they arise? And when what is absent, do they not arise? Yeah, so this is the wise way of asking questions. Please understand, so how to ask questions also. Hmm? So this is one uh, very intelligent way, very precise way of asking questions. So what he's asking, I completely agree and appreciate your answer to my first question. But what is again this uh, the source of the origin of this envy and miserliness? For this Issa and Macharya, what is the source? From where do these defilements arise? What is the source and origin of these defilements? What will, when something is present in, in our mind, these defilements, will, they should arise. And when they are absent, they should not arise. What is that because of which these two will arise? And what is that because of its absence, these two will not arise? So in that way, he inquires, he asks Buddha. So what is the origin of this? Issa and Macharya, this envy and miserliness. Then Buddha answers, Envy and miserliness arise from liking and disliking. If you have this reacting mind, if you see something, immediately start liking it. And if you see something else, immediately start disliking it. This kind of liking and disliking, that nature, that reacting nature of the mind is the cause of this Issa and Macharya. So even for this strong possessiveness, strong jealousy, the core reason is your reactiveness. The core reason is your uh, this uh, uncontrolled reactiveness, habituated reactiveness. You are habituated to liking and disliking without giving a thought for why I am liking this, why I am disliking this, without observing the things, without giving a thought. If you are addicted to this kind of reacting and uh, reacting in the form of liking and disliking, then these, this kind of reactive nature of the mind it will emulate, it will start, uh, say, helping this kind of, uh, it will create that, that kind of environment in the mind for this envy and possessiveness to arise in the mind. So if you are re very reactive, then definitely will become envious, then definitely will become possessive. So that possessiveness and uh, this uh, jealousy, it is based on, its foundation is, is your reacting mind towards anything you strongly like, you strongly dislike, that kind of nature, that kind of attitude of the mind is the basis for the arising of envy and possessiveness. That's what Buddha answers. This is their origin. This is how they are born, how they arise. When, they, when these are present, this liking and disliking, when they are present, they arise. When these are absent, they do not arise. When your mind is obsessed with this liking and disliking kind of reacting to the external things, when you are completely trapped in this habituation of liking something, disliking something, then such a mind, 
is definitely is the seat of possessive possessiveness and jealousy also again he continues his uh, series of questions he started asking the questions which are based on this answer and he asked this sakka he asked buddha but sir what gives rise to liking and disliking i completely agree with that if liking and disliking is very much there in our mind so that is the seat of uh, enviousness or this miserliness to arise but why this liking and disliking in our mind what is the basis for this liking and disliking then buddha answers the arise from desire because we have this uh, this first uh, this first and second noble truth craving is there in the mind because of this craving or desiring or wanting so that is the reason for this liking and disliking when you want something automatically its counterpart is also present just like i used to tell in uh, many of the the discourses jitna gehra rag hai utna gehra dvesh hai so once your mind has started liking something or craving something desiring something then definitely it will fall into this wobbling of liking and dislike like a pendulum if the pendulum moves one side it has to go in the other side also just like a wave when the wave goes up it has to come down same way when there is some kind of craving some kind of desiring then you will fall into this trap of liking and dislike the liking and disliking nature it has to follow the desire that so you are desiring you are craving and when this liking and disliking is there in the mind and definitely you will fall into this trap of enviousness and possessiveness jealousy and uh, say miserliness issa and matsarya irsha and matsarya definitely will fall. so that is the link that is the chain issa and matsarya is based on liking and disliking liking and disliking is based on desiring wanting craving <clears throat> so when this liking and disliking are not there then issa and macharya enviousness and jealousy uh, and this miserliness will not be there but in the same way when the desire is not there then liking and disliking will not be there and jealousy will not be there and again he asks the question what is the cause for this desire what gives rise to desire in that way this sarka asks the question so then buddha answers it arises from thinking please understand this chain this series and we will get a lot of clarity in uh, handling our own mind in fixing our own negative mind in fixing lot of our issues which arise from negative mind lot of our issues like worry fear uh, anger jealousy grudge and all these many issues that arise in the mind first they lead to all the problems in the life with the people in the in the uh, in the working place in the family with the friends in the society everywhere it's our own mind it it uh, it has to it has to be understood our own mind has to be fixed our own mind has to be handled then only you can handle the situation around you so please understand this kind of uh, this chain of how the negativities arise in the mind and how then automatically we will learn how to fix them and that automatically you can lead a successful and happy life <coughs> so <clears throat> his next question is what uh, what is the source for this desire what gives rise to desire then buddha answers the desire arises from thinking desire will not arise from nowhere it will arise from thinking when the mind thinks about something then the desire arises then again he asks uh, and when the mind thinks of nothing when the mind thinks of something desire arises when the mind thinks of nothing then there is no desire desire will not arise but sir what gives rise to thinking fine i agree the desire arises because of uh, thinking so when there is no thinking then there is no desire when there is no desire then there is no liking and disliking when there is no liking and disliking then there is no uh, this possessiveness and uh, enviousness that i completely agree this chain of uh, connections the links but why this thinking why people should think 
always now the whole world is obsessed of thinking in our education system starting from class 1 lkg people push the small kids to think 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 of course we can't completely deny this as householders with lot of uh, responsibilities to take care of the body to take care of our uh, physical requirements one has to definitely think but thinking and non thinking thinking and stopping thinking thinking and the ability to stop thinking they should go together otherwise we get trapped into this uh, this uh, net of or this uh, vicious cycle of thinking and that's the reason why a lot of psychosomatic issues psychological issues mental health issues all over the world because we we know how to think but we don't know how to stop thinking we know how to drive a car but we don't know how to stop the car we go and hit something and then only we can stop the car so that's what is the problem in this uh, present day education system we know how to think but we don't know how to stop thinking and buddha says very authoritatively that the cause of desire is thinking when there is no thinking then there is no desire at all very authoritatively he says always we say the cause of suffering is craving the cause of suffering is desiring craving but we don't know how to stop craving and how to stop suffering but here buddha authoritatively says by stopping your thinking you can stop desiring that's what we do in all our meditations in all our meditations we are handling our mind to let go thinking to stop thinking and to be in the whatever object that meditation object is there in the present moment we simply be with that we are not thinking about that we are simply be with that so when you learn how to be with meditation object then you are automatically stopping your thinking and once you stop your thinking then you stop your desiring so once you stop your desiring then you have stopped your liking and disliking once you have stopped your liking and disliking then you have stopped your enviousness and and your miserliness your irsha and matsarya your issa and matsarya so in that way this uh, vicious cycle of negative defilements or these unwholesome mental factors they can be stopped in any authoritative meditation technique in any authoritative meditation practice so that's what is buddha's authoritative answer to his uh, his questions so he says by stopping thinking then you can stop desiring again he continues after all he is a wise person this uh, sakka and he wanted to know the core of the problem he wanted to penetrate into the source of all the problem so again he inquires again he asks buddha and this is called yoniso mansikara so whatever problem is there you should learn how to go into its root then only you can fix it correctly if you fix it in a superficial way then again it may sprout again it may create a problem again the problem may multiply just like if when you cut a tree the branches or the stem again it will grow again it will sprout but if you go to the roots and remove the roots of the tree then it will not grow in the same way this kind of yoniso mansikara going to the depth of the problem root of the problem the source of the problem that is what is the approach of wise people so as a wise person this sakka is enquiring buddha why this thinking again i completely agree by stopping thinking we can stop desiring and then all other defilements but now why this thinking itself why people think so much why people are get trapped into this vicious cycle of thinking though they do they want to stop thinking they are not in a position to think i have seen many people in hyderabad in in other many other places all over the world they say so we can't stop thinking it is my own mind that is troubling me here in hyderabad one lady she killed herself by suicide so in her suicide note what she has mentioned is something like this i killed myself because i could not stop thinking i'm get trapped into this thinking and it is creating hell lot of problem and i attempting suicide so this thinking why this thinking if you understand why this thinking then stopping becomes easy that is the role of wisdom that is the role of understanding that is the role of right view and right understanding so the, so for that right understanding we have to have this kind of uh, dhamma talks where 
very authoritatively buddha gives the source of all the problems and once you know the source of all the problems how to go to the source of all the problems through this yoniso manasikara yoniso manasikara yoniso yoni means source manasikara means like contemplating or going to the root of the problem so once you learn how this art of going to the root of the problem then automatically fixing that problem becomes easy so with that intention <coughs> this buddha this sakka the king of the uh, devas he asks what gives rise to thinking why this thing why why this bloody thinking always disturbs us again and again again and again we why we can't come out of this habit pattern of thinking then buddha says thinking ruler of the devas arises from elaborated perceptions and notions when elaborated perceptions and notions are present thinking arises when elaborated perceptions and notions are absent thinking does not arise this is an important thing which requires some explanation so elaborated perceptions and notions means when you when we expose ourselves to different things multiple things through our six senses the mind sense and the five physical senses through education through our uh, say culture through our exposure to different things hmm? so because of this so much exposure to so many things through our six senses acha so because of this exposure to so many things to so many sense impressions automatically thinking arises when we see something automatically because of that object that we see our mind starts thinking about that object when we listen to something because of that uh, sound so once that sound strikes our ear drum let us say when it when that that bombardment it creates a thought in our mind the same way when a taste when we eat something when we experience some taste that very taste it creates some thoughts it, it uh, creates some thought in our mind so all these sense objects sense impressions even the mind sense objects and mind sense impressions they create thinking they create this uh, uh, series of thoughts so <clears throat> this kind of elaborated exposure to different things different objects different uh, ideas different notions different uh, say uh, say learnings the different things we learn we learn about uh, geography history we learn about physics chemistry biology we learn about uh, computers we learn about astronomy we learn about uh, so oceanology we learn about weather so many things so many uh, impressions in the form of uh, the so called ideas the so called uh, knowledge the so called education so we we develop we get lot of impressions we get lot of these perceptions and notions and ideas and this kind of impressions this kind of sense impressions that we get through our six senses they create the thoughts the thinking thinking is because of our exposure to these different sense objects that leads to this thinking then the next question is whether we should stop this being in the world so where we are definitely we should expose to this all kinds of sense impressions how to stop this we should go to jungle we should go to himalayas hmm? live in a deep uh, cave hmm? in a in a cave and we should uh, completely ignore the world no there also sense impressions will not leave you there will be some sounds some sounds will definitely create some thoughts there will be so many visible objects those visible objects also will create some thoughts in your mind forget about visible objects and these sound objects and of course you have to eat the uh, the taste and the smells all these sense objects wherever you go they will not leave you and more than these physical objects physical sense objects the mind objects they will definitely they will be with you they will not leave you so even if you go to himalayas and stay in uh, deep jungles or in the caves these six objects these impressions from these six sense objects they will not leave us then what is the solution what is the solution so that though we are with these six sense objects at the same time those sense objects those sense impressions should not lead to thinking should not lead to this kind of 
thought formation in the mind. It should not lead to the formation of thoughts in the mind. What is the key? What is the solution? What is the solution? Again, it is your mindfulness or meditation. So what you are learning in these different levels, level one, level two, and of course, in future levels also. You are learning, you are accepting, you are taking the sense impressions, but you are not reacting it. You are observing it as it is. You are not con converting that sense impression into a thought. You are stopping that transformation or changing or conversion of that sense impression into thinking. There only you are striking, you are hitting there. You are stopping that, that link. You are cutting that link. You are destroying that link. What is that link? You are, you are not allowing that sense impression. Taste. Taste, you are observing the taste as taste in your eating meditation. In sound meditation, you are observing the sound as sound. You are not started, you are not, start, you are not going to start or you are not thinking about why this sound, who is making this sound, whether it is pleasant sound or unpleasant sound. That kind of, uh, say, reacting to, to that sound is what is called thinking. When you stop reacting, then you stop thinking. So in that way, in the, in the same way, when you see a physical object, when you say, when you see, uh, when you hear a uh, uh, sound, when you taste some particular, uh, say, uh, when you experience some taste through some, by eating, through, uh, while you are eating, the same way smell, in the same way the bodily sensations. When you stop thinking about these different sense impressions, through this meditativeness, through this mindfulness, through this awareness, through this objective awareness, observing these sense impressions that are bombarding my uh, physical senses and even the mind sense. I'm just neutral to it. I'm just equanimous to this. I'm just, uh, say, non-reactive to this. I'm aware at the same time I'm non-reactive to this. That kind of habit pattern, that kind of attitude is helping you in curbing this, in stopping this, or in converting these sense impressions into thinking. If that is handled, if that is achieved, then you have learned how to stop thinking. Of course, you have to think as a, as a, as a scientist, as a doctor, as a mother, you have to think about children, as a father, you have to definitely think about the family, as a, an employee, you have to think about your company, your office. Thinking is a part of existence, especially when you are not fully into this uh, uh, meditation. At the same time, you should learn how not to think also, because that is a way to unlearn, that is a way to give rest to the mind, that is a way to purify the mind, that is a way to control the mind. If the mind goes uncontrolled, one, then you will go crazy, you will go mad. That is because of this uncontrolled thinking. That is the core reason for all the psychological issues. Forget about psychological issues, all mental health issues, all the fears. Continuously you are thinking about something, you can't control it, you can't stop thinking, that's why it becomes a fear. Continuously thinking about something, you can't control it, it becomes worry. It becomes anxiety, it becomes stress, it becomes depression, it becomes any damn thing that you say. They say there are some 72,000 mental health issues. All these 72,000 mental health issues and many diseases which are because of, again, of this uh, uncontrolled thinking, where you can't have a hold, where you don't have a grip on thinking. That leads to this, both these mental health issues and also from that mental health issues, it will percolate to the body also and it will create physical health issues also. The present day, all health issues, the physical health issues also, they are rooted in the mind. They are rooted in this uncontrolled thinking. Hmm? So, <clears throat> so, to come out of this kind of... Uh, habituated thinking, uncontrolled thinking, obsessive thinking, compulsive thinking. So no education system or nowhere you learn, only in meditation, only in, in, uh, in a proper objective meditation techniques, hmm? wholesome meditation techniques. So you will learn this ability to stop thinking. So once you learn how to stop thinking, then you can stop uh, <coughs> desiring so once you learn how to stop desiring, then you stop liking and disliking. Once you learn how to stop liking and disliking, then you stop enviousness and 
possessiveness. So once you stop enviousness and possessiveness, isha and matsarya, isha and matsarya, then you can stop all kinds of disputes, disputes within, disputes in the family, disputes in the community, uh, disputes in the society, disputes at the, at the national level or international level, global level. All kinds of disputes can be checked, can be handled, can be fixed by this core ability of stilling the mind, calming the mind, letting go and stopping, curbing this sense impression into thinking. That factor, in that, in that conversion, if your mind is non-reactive, then you have achieved. You have achieved this art of not thinking, art of stopping how to think. This is one beautiful art. Please learn this. This will save you. This will uh, protect you from, from all the miseries. That, that is the way to become a liberated person also. That's what uh, you're actually undergoing the training in level one, level two, and all these levels. That this art of uh, stopping these sense impressions into thinking. If that art, if you become a master in that art, then the mind is under your control and automatically all these defilements, the desiring, liking and disliking, hating or this enviousness and possessiveness, all these things you can conquer. So that is what is Buddha's answer to this question. And as I was telling you in the last, uh, say in the last class, in the last discourse, uh, so one of our teachers in from Burma, he has written one, one, one booklet on this Issa and Macharya and he gave a talk in UN I think about this about this Issa and Macharya the Buddhist version of handling uh, the international disputes the Buddhist version of uh, say universal peace world peace so this is the approach handling your own mind is the approach to handle the world establishing peace in oneself is the way to establish peace in the world. So with that, with that objective, <coughs> this uh, talk was given in the UN. And of course, it is quite applicable for each and every one of us. It's not just for the UN. It's not just for the people who work at the uh, global uh, level and to establish peace in the globe. But if for each and in individual, this is the approach. And once you become skillful in this approach, then establish peace in yourself then definitely you can peace you can see peace in the world so that is what is uh, today's talk on isa and macharya and when this isam and macharya is is gone out of the mind then there is harmony absolute harmony in the mind in the mind and body the different faculties of the mind in mind and body between me and others whether it is family or at the global level Okay, so <clears throat> its counters, its opposites are, as I was telling you, the opposites of this Isha and Macharya is, of course, the meditative approach. Stopping thinking is one approach. And uh, its opposite factors are Hiri and Vattapa, the wholesome factors. Again, they are there in the mind. Just like this uh, Isha and Macharya are there in the mind, this Hiri and Vattapa. Hiri means like moral shame. Vattapa means moral fear. As I was telling you, I, I remember I told uh, a little bit about this Hiri and Vattapa in the last week. If you have moral shame to do something which is not good for me, which is not good for others, and if you have some moral fear to do something which is harmful to me, which is harmful to others, because of uh, doing that, because of performing that evil act, I will be punished. Or wise people will uh, will uh, say will tease me, or will uh, say admonish me, or they dislike me, or I will be punished, or it is not good for me. This kind of moral shame and moral fear, which is very much there within us, within our mind, we have to nurture them. So we should understand each and every act. We should understand each and every thought, each and every word that we utter, whether it is good for me, good for others, whether it is shameful or not shameful, 
whether it leads to some danger or whether it doesn't lead to any danger that kind of assessing that is what is called moral shame and moral fear that we will see in some abhidhamma classes now i think the because the, just i introduce these things because they are like antidotes to this isa and macharya uh, intellectually you can cultivate meditation is an experiential way of uh, uh, say fixing this uh, isa and macharya and this uh, hiri and vatappa moral shame and moral fear intellectually if you cultivate them so that also will help us to fix this jealousy and possessiveness this and macharya that we will see in the abhidhamma classes but now in this dhamma class we'll understand uh, the root of this isan macharya the links the connecting links and uh, what we are doing in our meditation it gives some substantial support for our meditation approach so in all our meditation techniques we are stopping this uh, this conversion of sense impressions into thinking so because thinking is the root of desiring and all other problems so we are stopping thinking in all our meditations once you learn how to stop thinking then you can stop disputes also you can at different levels that different chain of uh, connections that we have seen that we can cut that we can uh, break and we can establish harmony that's what